Hi. The other day, I was doing one of those quizzes that you find on Facebook. It was about the James Bond films. FYI, I scored 26 out of 30, which puts me in the genius category. But a colleague wondered if it actually meant I was a massive geek with too much time on my hands. It got us wondering about wh what it is that makes us intelligent. Is it our ability to remember information, facts, statistics and so on, whether they be about James Bond or astrophysics? Or is it something else? So, after a small amount of research, I'd like to discuss with you a few of the findings and conclusions I came up with about intelligence. We often read in newspapers and online articles from people lamenting the advent of the internet because they claim that since the internet started people have become less intelligent. These people, I imagine many of them are quite old, claim that Wikipedia and Google are making all of us, but particularly students, very lazy. They claim nobody applies their brain power anymore because answers are freely available online. And that might seem like a fair point. In fact, the term the Google generation has been coined to describe the current generation who rely heavily on Google to answer every question. Why is this lamented though? Why are those who criticize Google so sad? Two reasons, I think. The first, well, I'll give you an example. Before 3 and 4G internet connections on your phones, if you were sitting in a pub or a coffee shop and the question of how many actors have played James Bond came up in conversation, there might be a 20 or 30 minute discussion about how many. It would become a debate as to whether David Niven in the original Casino Royale spoof of the James Bond films should really be classed as a real Bond. The answer, by the way, is six if you exclude David Niven and seven if you include him. Personally, I'd exclude him, but let's not get into that debate. Now, though, instead of a 20 or 30 minute discussion, the answer is Googled in a matter of seconds and the discussion is dead. We know the answer, so there's nothing to discuss. You can probably think of your own example of similar discussions happening and finishing fairly quickly. Football trivia is another commonly solved area uh, through the internet. The second reason is about our ability to critically think about and evaluate what we read and hear. Critics of the Google generation lambast their lack of thought about the information presented and their blind acceptance of it. The mentality of, oh, it says such and such on Wikipedia, so it must be true. Now, this idea of critical thinking is an essential skill in life. I remember as a kid when I did something wrong, I'd often say that my older brother told me to do it. My mum would respond with something like, if he told you to put your head in the fire, would you do that? Obviously not, because even at a young age, we apply a thought process to information and instructions we receive. As students, you are obviously required to apply those same skills to the information you receive in your learning. Obviously that information is a little more complex than deciding it's not a good idea to put your head or your hand in a fire if your older brother tells you to. Coming back to our original topic though, what makes us intelligent? Well, research has shown that we humans are not great at remembering things that we can easily find the answers to when we need to. An influential theory among psychologists is that we are cognitive misers. This is the idea that we are reluctant to do mental work unless we have to. We try to avoid thinking things through fully when a shortcut is available. For example, you may choose not to remember your university email password because you have it on your telephone. I choose not to remember my bank account sort code and account number because I can find those numbers when I log into my account. Perhaps then 
intelligent people know how to access or find information as and when they need it. You will find over the course of your studies that your ability to search Google improves a lot. Your search terms will become much more specific to what you want to find. At least if your searching skills don't improve, you will have problems when researching topics. To explain this idea of cognitive misers, philosophers like Andy Clark say that we have minds that naturally incorporate new tools, ideas and abilities. From Clark's perspective, the route to a solution is not the issue. If you have the right tools to reach a solution, the thought process and search, it is the same as knowing the answers already. I think that's a fair point. What we know and can recall easily might be great in quizzes and when discussing the Bond films or whatever with your friends, but it is not a reliable measure of intelligence. Even though we might say that the guy who wins the pub quiz every week is clever, intelligence covers a much greater field, from recall of facts, to creating spur-of-the-moment arguments as to why Sean Connery was or was not the best James Bond, to solving the problem of what research you need to do and how to do it for your project study this year. Indeed, a lot of your teachers this year will lament your lack of what we call general knowledge about the stuff that is happening in the world today or has happened in the last few years and we may lament your lack of cultural reference points which we take for granted example if I refer to one teacher being ill because he is from the south I'm actually not just stating a fact that he is from the south of England I'm implying that he is weak and that his weakness caused his illness. As you spend more time in the UK, you need to become aware of these cultural reference points to fully understand what people mean. And that is another form of intelligence, your ability to adapt. So yeah, intelligence is, is far more than just your ability to recall facts and figures. It encompasses a very wide variety of things. Thank you very much.